Hey, welcome back to my channel. I am currently on week number two, or I have just finished week number two of uh, doing a complete sugar detox out of my diet. Um, it originally started with just saying no to desserts and sweets, but it has uh, transformed into really cutting out all added sugars and limiting a lot of sugars in my diet altogether, including with fruits and things like that. Um, so after two weeks, uh, I can say that um, a lot of the effects, a lot of the experience that I've had has been very unexpected. With a lot of the videos that I've seen on YouTube, I was expecting to grow wings, get superpowers, and be able to fly away and do anything that I wanted to do. Um, a lot of people have made it sound like cutting sugar out of your diet would just revolutionize everything about you in a short amount of time. And while I have seen a lot of positive benefits, I can say that there has been a lot of unexpected things as well. And so I want to spend this reflection talking about those things that I wasn't really expecting. Things that have been good, but things that have also been a little bit more trying and a little bit more difficult than I think um, I would have expected when I cut out sugar. So the first thing I want to bring up is that I have not been sleeping. Um, I haven't really slept well in over two weeks since I started this. And, um, you know, I've had a lot of success with cutting sugar out. And so I was hoping to actually fix some sleeping issues that I've had in my life. But uh, they've actually gotten a little bit worse. Uh, on Monday, I woke up at 1 o'clock in the morning and couldn't go back to sleep. And on Tuesday, I got up at 2.30 in the morning and couldn't go back to sleep. And so I spent kind of this past week in a fog, kind of a zombie walking around. Um, and, you know, I was trying to figure out, well, what, what is it? Is it is it like detoxing from sugar? That seemed to not really be it. I mean, it had been about 10 days since I had um, started cutting out sugar. So it couldn't really be that, right? Maybe it's something else. Last week, I had said that as I was cutting sugar out, I started thinking about maybe cutting down on all refined carbohydrates and maybe even just lowering my carbohydrate intake uh, to a really low level. I was actually starting to shoot for 100 grams a day. Um, I wasn't necessarily moving towards the keto diet, but it was something that was actually, you know, I was considering and starting to think maybe it was a possibility. But as I lowered those carbohydrates, I had to replace those calories with something else. And what I was replacing them with was a lot of fat. And um, I was just kind of going all in on, you know, eating, eating fat from various sources, plant sources and animal sources. And, um, you know, not really like doing deep fried foods or anything like that, because that would have had a lot of breading, but more so, you know, keeping the skin on the chicken and eating more eggs and adding a lot more olive oil and being a little bit more liberal with how much butter I use in something. Um, and those fat calories, they really added up. And in fact, I was uh, hitting about 140 grams of fat, um, a few days even more than that. I was eating about 140 grams of fat per day. And I've struggled with reflux issues in the past, and I think what was happening with my sleep was that as I was eating more fat, I was having more reflux issues, um, which was leading to a lack of sleep. So the sugar detox led to me restructuring my diet, and that restructuring led to some issues that I wasn't expecting. Um, you know, I didn't really expect this when I cut out sugar. I, I just assumed that I would cut out the sugar and that things would just all work out. But it turns out that that's not really the case. And for me, since I struggle with reflux, I can't cut out carbohydrates altogether because I'm going to have to replace them either with a whole lot more protein, which I already eat a lot of protein as it is, or a whole lot more fat. And so what I've had to do is think about how I can set up my diet so that the carbs come from uh, vegetable sources and maybe some fruit sources that are lower sugar, uh, but to make sure that they're coming from healthy sources, but keep those carbohydrates up so that I have the energy and the calorie intake that I need without having to resort to eating a lot of fat. So going into week three, I'm shooting for 140 grams of protein, about 190 grams of carbs from mostly good sources, and then about 80 to 90 grams of fat. And I want to see how that goes, goes this upcoming week. The second thing that I've uh, realized is that momentum makes this kind of easy. Um, so I ran a marathon last year and what I realized was that if I woke up, got ready, uh, stretched and warmed up a little bit and just made myself go outside, no matter how tired I was or how badly I didn't want to go out and do it, I found that it was pretty easy to just start running and then it would feel good and I would warm up and then by the end of the run I would be really happy to do that. And I made it such a routine, such a habit that once I was months into training for the marathon that it didn't seem very hard, right? I had that momentum that every day, this is what I do, it became routine. And I've realized that with cutting out sugar that I, I'm not really tempted to grab the sweets anymore. I, I really thought that this would have taken longer, but after two weeks, like, I don't even think about it. Like, I'm not even, I'm not even like, cognizant of the sweets that are there or available. All I'm thinking about is the other things that I can eat to replace, you know, the sugar in my diet and to eat something healthy. 
So that's been um, a positive uh, that, you know, momentum wise that it's just rolling. And I think that if you decide to do something to change your diet, like a sugar detox or whatever it is you're trying to do, know that it is going to be tough at first and you're going to have to do a lot of thinking and planning out for it to work. But once you get going with it, I mean, it's just, it's like the, the, the sugar cravings are just gone and the the idea that I would even eat sugar that's just kind of disappeared as well the third thing that I've realized and this connects back to number two is that sugar's not really as much of an addiction as I thought um, I had even made the argument before that sugar was you know at least close to being like an alcoholic or some other drug or something like that and that you know one day that we would have you know surgeon general warnings on the side of sugar packets and things like that um, and I, I, I've, I've been proven wrong with that, at least in my personal experience. Um, you know, when somebody's addicted to something, they have extreme withdrawals. And I had some withdrawals, right? But it was more just like a craving. And then uh, I had some withdrawals in the sense that, you know, I was maybe a little bit jittery the first few days or maybe, you know, had a little bit of, you know, feeling a little lethargic. But that might have been because I was adding all those fats and not sleeping very well. Um, you know, after a couple of days, it really wasn't hard. After a, a week, I felt really great about what I was doing. And after two weeks, you know, I had that momentum. And so I've realized that, you know, sugar is not as addicting as, as I think people make it out to be. And if you do a Google search of sugar addiction, you're gonna see website after website, article after article, talking about how your withdrawal symptoms are gonna be very similar to a drug addict. And they're gonna list all these things that you should expect to have happen to you, uh, much like somebody coming off of a hard drug or alcohol or maybe even smoking might experience. Um, and while I do think that there is certainly a psychological addiction to sugar, your body is not going to respond in such a way. And I think it can make people fearful to think that if I cut out sugar, I'm going to have this like extreme experience that I have to be ready for. But when the reality is that you're just going to feel a little bit better and you're going to have some momentum in terms of improving your health so that in the long run, you really do feel better about the decisions you've made and the way that you're eating. So two weeks down and, um, you know, the most positive things I can say is that inflammation is down. Uh, there's less bloating. I feel good um, outside of the sleeping issues. I do feel good. I feel really excited and optimistic about the direction that my health is going. So thanks for joining me and I'll check in next week about how this is going. Thanks.